Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Thought I'd do another quick video, kind of a conclusion to all of these uh, SSDs I've been testing. Mainly want to talk about this one here. I'll get to that in a minute. This is a new uh, Sabrent USB 3.2 enclosure. And it's really cool because it doesn't take any tools. I'm going to show you how to use this one. If you want to skip straight to that, I'll put a time link. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about SSDs in general first. And I've tried four different kinds here. Uh, everything from the Rocket 4.0, which is the newest one, down to, uh, this is called the Rocket Q. These are all by Sabrent. This one here is by OWC. I've actually had this one for about a year. And I've learned quite a bit about them. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the 4.0. So what I've learned about the 4.0 is that's a new PCI standard and most computers are still PCI 3.0. So that means it can't really take advantage of the speed that the chip's capable of. Now, the good news is at some point in time, you know, computer motherboards and like the Mac Pro right now, it's PCI 3.0 as well. But once that standard becomes more commonplace, that gives us speed capabilities up to four to 6,000 megabytes a second. Uh, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. When it gets, when you do that, it gets really hot. So I don't think you'll be able to use an enclosure like this if you're running on a 3.0. Now, the bottom line is, I don't know if Thunderbolt is gonna support that. Thunderbolt is, everybody thinks Thunderbolt's this really weird thing. All Thunderbolt is, is it's, it's DisplayPort and PCI in a single cable. That's all it really is. There's nothing magic about it. That's why Thunderbolt can become anything you want. It can become USB, it can become Ethernet, because it's, it's just your PCI bus that's on a cable. So anything that PCI can support, which is everything, uh, Thunderbolt can support, but not at the speed of an internal Thunder or internal PCI bus. Uh, as far as the heat's concerned, uh, what I found is that most of the heat comes from this controller chip that's here near the pins. And you'll notice on these two, uh, they've actually got a foil strip on the NAND chips, but on the this one here, they actually let that foil strip go over the controller chip. Now, one of the reasons they do that is because the NAND chip actually is better to run hot. So they're trying to pull the heat out of this uh, controller chip and push it into the NAND chip because really the NANDs, if you run them warm, it's easier on the chip and it will last longer. And uh, I think that's why they're doing it. Now, the question is, well, how hot can they actually get? Well, uh, they can actually get up to 70, uh, 70 degrees centigrade and they're not going to burn themselves out. So even if you drive them really hard, if they get too hot, they're going to throttle down and slow down to protect themselves. To give you an idea of the speed of this, uh, this one, uh, what I did is I took, I've got a, this one here, I put a 4.0 case uh, chip in and it's a four terabyte. I took the fan out because the fan in this little fledgling case is a little annoying. And I thought, well, I wonder what it would do without it. I was careful to use thermal tape on this uh, controller chip, which is not quite as thick. And so I put a thinner piece on this to make sure this was contacting the case. And in fact, in this one, I don't even think I put any on that. Uh, I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna put it real thin so a little of that heat comes out. Anyway, I transferred three terabytes of data and it only got to about 62 degrees. Now that's eight degrees away from where the limit is. Is that warm enough that it throttled it might? But three terabytes of writing data is just not typical of what you're gonna do. Under normal usage, even doing videos and stuff out of it, I'm seeing 1800 megabytes a second and I'm seeing temperatures more in the 48 to 52 degree range if I really, really stress it. And even then I've got to push it pretty hard. I mean, I've got to be writing a, you know, a two or 300 gigabyte file to actually see those kind of temperatures. So the temperatures, as long as you've got it, uh, uh, as long as you've got good thermal tape to that controller chip to the outside of the case, I think it's good. That's uh, these others, that's what, that's what they're depending on. Uh, you see, I've got a little piece here that only hits that controller chip. Um, what I did is I bought some, uh, these pads from Amazon, there's three different thicknesses. So like on this one, I can put a thicker piece on the controller chip, still put a piece here. Now, one of the things I found with these Thunderbolt 3 cases is that there's a component on these cases right here. And this component sticks up far enough that it's a little bit of a problem. If you notice, if you take this Rocket 4.0, you'll see that I've got chips on both sides. So it's pretty thick. And if I try to put it into this case here, you can see that I'm actually gonna hit that component and I can't quite close it down all the way. But if I cinch it down, it's gonna put pressure on that, it's gonna bow, and I don't know if that's bad for it or not. Um, uh, what I did on this one is I try to keep the pressure off of that and we'll see. But if I use the, the two terabyte one, you'll see that I have an opening here. So when I put it in, it doesn't hit because it's that component misses that right there. 
And of course, if I put this two terabyte Rocket Q in, there's no chips on the back. I did notice that little component is still hitting the bottom of this. You can see it then in the paper right here. And that's because of the pressure of the thermal tape. And so I'm probably gonna try to be careful because I don't really want to bend it down that far. I, I need to put a thinner layer of tape on it. That's why I bought the different thicknesses. You want enough that it makes contact, obviously, but you don't want it to be really putting a lot of pressure on. So another thing I decided to do was, you know, decide if I needed this kind of speed. Most of the tests I've been doing are geared mainly for photographers that are shooting Lightroom, maybe using Photoshop, but they're not doing a lot of video work. And I thought, well, okay, what do I need? Uh, now, all of my tests have been on internal SSDs, which are really, really fast. I thought, well, I'm gonna run some of those tests using these. So I used the four, this uh, USB 3.1 device, which is capable of about four, it runs consistent about 480 megabytes a second. I use this two terabyte Rocket Q, which gives me a 12, 1300 uh, on a Blackmagic test. And then I use this uh, Rocket 4.0, uh, where did it go, right here. Uh, which is my top end one, which gives me 1,800 to 2,000 typically. And I ran my four main tests. And what you'll see, if I'll pop the graph up right here, you'll see that there's not a lot of difference. In fact, the USB one actually won a couple of the tests. So it really, if you're using it for Lightroom, if you get up to 500 megabytes a second or so with even a 3.1 Gen 1 device, you're gonna have all the speed you probably need. Now, if you're doing a little video, you might wanna go a little faster, and that's where this one comes in. Maybe you don't wanna spend the money for this. This is half the price, and it's USB Gen 3.2, which is the same as USB Gen 3.1 Gen 1, or Gen 2. Yeah, it's confusing, I know. Right? Basically, they renamed USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is 1,000 megabytes a second standard to three, USB 3.2, and they still use the Gen 2 on it sometime. So USB 3.1 Gen 1 is this speed, 500 megabytes a second. Anyway, the cool part about this is it doesn't take any tools. Um, I just pop this open, turn it like that, and then there's a little magnetic uh, catch right here. As you can see, I can put any of the four common sizes of SSDs in here. That's what the different openings are for. I can take my device, put it in, and then I take this little thing and I kind of stick it over there and then I drop it down, and if you do it right, it'll pop into that and magnetic right there, and boom, you're good to go. Take and put the cover back on. Now, if you're using one of these other ones, uh, you might need to change the thermal tape and use a little thinner. This one here, it works pretty good. These are thicker, and so if you're having to squeeze too hard because your device is too thick, then I would recommend that you uh, um, take this off and put a little thinner piece on. This is about the right thickness for this one. Uh, I ran some black magic tests on this and I consistently got 950 megabytes a second. I think this will give you consistent throughput of 950 megabytes a second, which is good for most video and certainly good enough for Lightroom and Photoshop. And like I said, this is half the price of these. And so I would recommend that you consider strongly. This might be a really good option. And because it's only a thousand megabytes a second, there's no reason to buy the, the higher priced SSDs because Almost every SSD is gonna give you speeds of that. Even this one, which is a little older, will still give me over a thousand megabytes a second. So it's a really good option. So I'll put a link to where you can buy this in the description below, as well as the other two cases. I like this Tech Q only because it's small and, and light. And I think for my, uh, a couple of them, I, you know, what I'm gonna probably do is have my two four terabyte ones in this, have a work two terabyte one in this, and that might be the one, uh, I'm gonna do a backup one for, a, it'll be a boot drive so I can boot from it. And then, uh, you know, I'll probably maybe try to sell the rest of them because I don't, you know, I certainly don't need 14 terabytes of data in my, uh, when I travel, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have plenty of room here. So anyway, hopefully you learned something on this. Uh, I think it's a pretty good device. If you have any questions about anything, just uh, hit me with a comment down below. And uh, until next time, see ya.